you've got questions, well, we have the man to answer those questions, Jeffrey Levine from Buckingham. Jeffrey, welcome back to another episode of Ask the Hammer. So good to be with you, Bob. So good to be with you because uh, I love that hammer. It brings me joy. I, questions uh, are on the way. You know, it's a, it's a anvil. I don't know if that makes a, it's a 10 ounce rip hammer with a hickory handle. <laughs> wow. wow. With a hickory handle. Wow. I know, very right? fancy over there. <laughs> oh my goodness. 10 ounces. Anyway. So, um, you, are question. you like a, a hammer, like, um, sommelier? Can you like smell the, the shaft, you know, smell the shaft of the hammer and tell this is hickory or this is uh pine. <laughs> uh, 2000, uh, but it, it needs to uh, to uh, settle for a little bit. Uh, we have to All right. let it breathe. <laughs> anyway, uh, so the, we're, right now as we're, we are recording, it's the middle of Medicare's annual election period, sometimes referred to as the annual enrollment period, sometimes <laughs> referred to as the open enrollment period, whatever. We've got a question about- I refer to as the annoying commercials on TV period. Yeah. You know, that's usually what happens. Although this year we're getting drowned out with a little bit of the election. So there's not quite as many open enrollment commercials as there were in years past. Well, but I digress. Back to you. Bob. Sorry. The election ends, you're going to get bombarded again. <laughs> that's and right. The question has to do with this. I understand that there's lots of changes going on with Medicare this annual ele uh, election period. What do I need to know? Yeah. You know, anytime we get into this uh, season, I always find that people are not as busy as they probably should be. You know, they're not really thinking about it. A lot of times, once somebody has made their choice about whether they're on Medicare or Medicare Advantage or whether they like their particular plan, they're kind of like on set it and forget it mode. And, you know, probably it's okay. But I don't like probably, Bob. I, probably to me is not good enough. I want to know really for certain or as close to as certain as I can be whether I'm doing the right thing. So every year during this time, if you're already in Medicare, there are sort of three broad things that you can be doing, right? And, you know, again, we're painting in broad strokes here, but one of them is if you're on regular Medicare, traditional Medicare, you can decide, I don't want to be on Medicare anymore, or I don't want to be on traditional Medicare. I'd like to be on a Medicare Advantage plan. And the numbers, the percentages of people who have enrolled in Medicare Advantage over the last few decades has skyrocketed. It has really increased. So more and more people are finding that an attractive option. If you all of a sudden have done some research and say, I'd rather that, well, then guess what? Now is the time to do it. Uh, conversely, if you'd like to go the opposite way, if you'd like to get off your Medicare Advantage plan and go to traditional Medicare, Maybe you're going to be traveling more. Uh, maybe you're looking for a wider range of doctors than can be provided by your Medicare Advantage plan. Now you can do that as well. In addition, you can also switch between Medicare Advantage plans. And if you are in traditional Medicare and you have uh, prescription coverage, which hopefully most people listening, if they're on traditional Medicare, will have, then you can also uh, switch between your Part D plan. So those are the things that you can generally do during this open enrollment season. You might say, well, if it was good last year, isn't it still good this year? Well, not necessarily. Your, let's look at drug plans, for instance. Your prescription plan can change each year. Your, uh, your premiums might be different from one year to the next. Your Part D provider might look and say, you know what, we, we uh, really subsidized or covered this cost, uh, this medication cost a lot. We don't want to do that anymore. And the technical, uh, technical wording for this is they change their formulary. What, again, it just means they decide to make a change in how much they're going to pay for prescription coverage for a specific type of medicine going forward. You might want to know that. Now, this year, there are some very unique things going into 2025. For instance, going into 2025, uh, one of the changes to Medicare is that Part D participants will be capped at a $2,000 out-of-pocket maximum. That's a big change. People who are spending a lot more than that will actually find themselves in a great position here saying, wow, I don't actually have to come out of pocket anymore. So if you're one of those people, congratulations to you. On the other hand, though, if the insurance company is going to be responsible for picking up more of those costs, you can imagine they're going to look to offset that somewhere else. So in certain areas and certain policies, you may find your premium going up a lot more than you might have expected because your insurance company is looking to spread out that increased cost over more individuals. So don't be surprised. And if you don't want to be surprised, check that out now.
Yeah. So for people that are looking to shop around, Medicare does have a plan finder on its website. Is that the first mm -hmm. place that you might recommend that someone goes? Yeah, that's a great resource. Uh, you might also find someone local to you who specializes in this type of planning. There are a lot of, uh, you know, uh, professionals that just do Medicaid, uh, excuse me, a Medicare or Medicare Advantage plans, Medicare supplement plans. So consulting with a professional who has knowledge of this can be valuable. But yeah, I think Medicare has got a, uh, a good, done a good job looking at their plan finder, particularly for if you're looking at, you know, Part D. If you're trying to figure out you know, what type of Medicare should I have, then you might want to do some additional research there. Again, uh, there are a lot of differences, but one of the biggest differences is more doctors typically will take Medicare than a particular Medicare Advantage plan, because Medicare Advantage is a private insurance policy that is subsidized by the federal government. But those individual private insurers still have to go out to those doctors and say, you know, will you take this coverage? Here's how we work, et cetera. So Medicare, traditional Medicare, typically gives you access to a broader range of providers. Medicare Advantage, on the other hand, may come with additional, you know, bells and whistles, if you will. For instance, certain vision benefits you may not get, or even, you know, the cost of certain meals per month can be wrapped up in there. Uh, it all depends upon the specific plan. And that's where we always say, you know, look at your specific geographic area. It's very regional specific. For instance, I said over the last few years and decades, there's been a lot more people using Medicare Advantage. If you look at the differences in places, there are some, you know, some geographic areas where like that is all that is actually more common than not. Then you have other areas of the country where it's still a very small percentage of the population using it. So some of that is driven by socioeconomic factors. But the other parts are just simply who, who's here? What insurance companies offer coverage in this area and how good are those policies relative to what I can get from straight Medicare, if you will? Yeah. So folks have until December December seventh to make a decision. Mm -hmm. My understanding is that if you choose a Medicare Advantage plan, you get an opportunity to do a do over if you don't like the plan. If you think you made a mistake from January first till the end of March, to select but only once a different Medicare <laughs> plan. <laughs> That's right. You get an early year kind of do over or makeup if you're on a Medicare Advantage plan. So for those who are considering that and wondering like what if, it's a little bit of a. Uh, a relief valve, if you will, a little pressure relief for them. Yep. Yeah. Well, at the moment, there are over 60 million people on Medicare, right, Jeffrey, and about 30 million yes, on yes. Medicare Advantage plans. And this is a very serious uh, decision, in part because, as, as some experts have suggested to me, uh, mistakes cost a lot of money. And so to get it right, right is really important, I think, right? A hundred percent. When that, that getting it right is, you know, enrolling at the right time, enrolling in the best plan for you and maintaining an eye on the future of what changes are happening, not only in your life, you may be on new medications than you are in years past, et cetera, but then also looking at what changes have happened externally to you, meaning like what insurance company changes have there been? A lot of providers based on these changes are actually picking up and leaving areas. Your coverage may not even exist next year. So do the homework now before decisions are made effectively for you. All right. So Medicare's open enrollment uh, is only a very short period of time, but open enrollment for questions for us is forever. That's it. We have open, open enrollment. That's it. You can do it whenever you'd like. But We'd like you to do it as soon as possible. So if you've got a question, give Bob and I a shout. Email us at askthehammer at buckinghamgroup.com. Again, that's askthehammer at buckinghamgroup.com. And Bob and I look forward to tackling your questions real soon.